Hello, today we'll be going over the 2020 August Coach of Long Challenge problem number four, smallest cam P. So the problem description is basically Chef has two strings, string S and string P, where string P basically contains a set of characters that are found within S. And basically you're asked to create a string that is lexicographically the smallest such that P appears in S and you can rearrange the letters of S. So now let's go over one of the sample test cases for this problem. So let's say we have S-U-P-A-H-O-T-B-O-Y. And we have B-O-H-O-T-Y. So basically what we have here is P and S. So what we want to create is some string, which is some rearrangement of S, but also contains P as a substring. So real quickly, let's take out all the elements of P and S. So we can take B O H O T Y is O T Y. So let's quickly take this out from S. So we would have S is equal to S U P A plus B O H O T Y. And the way we get this is, if we take this um, set of characters, H-O-T-B-O-Y, we'll, we can just arrange this to B-O-H-O-T-Y, because we have the same amount of characters, so let's just rearrange it to that. So what we essentially did in our first step was that we split S into two strings. We split S into a string, S prime plus P, where we took out the characters of P and S to put in this string, and then S prime basically consists of all of the letters that are remaining after we take out P from S. So now in step two, we have split S into these two strings. So how do we find the lexicographically small string? Let's rearrange this into the lexicographically small string. We have A, P, S, U. So from the first, from S prime, right, this is just S prime, um, we have APSU as a lexicographically small string, as we discussed previously. So now we need to find a way to incorporate P into S prime in order to create the lexicographically small string as a combination of both of them. So in order to do this, we need to find out a placement in which we can put it. So let's look at the first character here. We notice it's a B. So since in lexicographical order, if you're going through a string, we go through left to right, and we just compare indices from left to right. So really, we really care about only the first number, the first letter. Because if we have something like A, P, B, O, H, O, T, Y, S, U, and we compare that to something like A, B, O, H, O, T, Y, P, S, U, we notice that by the first letter here, where we have B is less than P, we stop and we immediately know that this is lexicographically smaller. So really, it depends on the placement of where we keep this B. So where do we want to place this um, string P such that it is lexicographically smallest? We want to place it in such a way such that this first character B is lexicographically smallest in the string. So we notice that if we have A, P, S, U, where can we place the B? We can place the B here, 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 or here. And we notice that if we place the B here, we get A, B, P, S, U, which is lexicographically smallest. And the reason why we're just looking at the B is because if we insert now this entire B, O, H, O, T, Y, we'll have A, B, O, H, O, T, Y, P, S, U. Now, when we read this from left to right, we notice that we go from A directly to B. For example, if we were to keep it as A, P, and then insert the B, O, H, O, T, Y, S, U at the end like this, if we were to compare the characters, we would notice that the B and P conflict, where we notice that since B is less than P, B is lexicographically smaller. Now, if we put the B, O, H, O, T, Y somewhere else, where we have A, P, S, B, O, H, O, T, Y, U. Suppose we have something like this. If we compare characters again, we notice that, again, second position, notice that B is less than P again. So really, it matters based off of the first character of P, because that is going to be the first character that shows up when reading the string from left to right.
Now, there's just one small problem with the solution. The only problem is if we look at a, a, another test case, for example, where we have something like A, M, M, C, D, P, and we have M, C. Okay, let's call this P and let's call this S. So in this case, uh, following our steps, our first step is to take away the characters of P from here. So we get S is equal to S prime plus P U, which in this case would be A, M, D, P plus M, C. So let's quickly rearrange this in order, it would become A, D, P, M. And then this is just P, so we don't rearrange it, right? So here, we notice that M, C should be inserted right here. Because, right, M uh, fits in with the M group, it, and it should come after. So if we insert it as A, D, M, and then we put M, C, and then we put P, suppose we insert it in between D and M. We have A, D, M, C... M, P. And what we notice is when comparing the first characters, we notice that we have A and D, we have M and M, but then the next one we have is an M and we're comparing it to a C. C is less than M, so we know that this is lexicographically smaller. So in general, in this case, we would have to look at the second character. But in this case, if we were supposed to do something like that, suppose we have something like M, C, A, where we keep on going and we keep on having to loop through the array and going through the characters. How would we know where to place it? Well, in this case, we can just create two strings. Why not just create one string where we have something like A, D, M. And since we notice that we have an M, we know that the MT must fit in somewhere here. So let's quickly put MC at the end and then have our P. Let's create one string like this. And let's create another string where we have something like A, D. Then we put MC before this. And then we have MP. So with these two strings, all we need to do at the end is just compare them. Let's just compare these two strings and whatever is lexicographically smaller, let's print that out. So comparing these two strings, we notice that the second string is less lexicographically smaller, so we would end up printing out the second string as our answer. One more test case to demonstrate how this solution works. Let's go over A K R A M K E E A N A Y. Um, AKA, where this is P and this is S. So in this test case, let's apply the same exact algorithm. Let's write S as some string, S prime plus P. So if we take away the characters of P, we have A, K, and A, and A, K, and A. Right, so let's just take these characters out for now. What we would have is we would have this as K, R, A, M, E, E, N, A, Y plus A, K, A. So with this, what we want to do is we want to arrange this in lexicographical least order, which would become A, A, E, E, K, M, and R, Y. So now in order to figure out where we input the A, we notice that looking at the first letter, it's an A. So it's going to belong somewhere between these areas. So what we're going to do is we're going to insert it at the beginning, A, K, A. Then we're going to have the remainder of our array. And let's put it at the end. So now we have two strings. So now we're just going to compare these two strings. We're going to compare. We notice that the first characters are the same. The second characters, we know that this is lexicographically smaller. So we know that our answer must be A, 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 K, A, E, E, K, M, N, R, Y. And real quickly, the reason why we do not insert it in the middle. Why do we not, not need to insert it in the middle? Um, we can check this, but it's not necessary. And the reason why is because it depends on the second character. Let's say that we had B, B, E, E, K, M, N, R, Y instead. If we look at the second character, it's a K in this example. So since K is greater than B, we know that we would opt to put K after the B. So we would opt to put it in the other spot, um, last spot. But if we have something like A, 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 or... Suppose we had B, K, B. Since K is greater than B, we would opt to put it in the last position. But suppose we had something like B, A, B instead, where we wanted to insert B, A, B inside instead. We notice that A is less than B. So therefore, we would opt to put the A before the B. So we want to put it at the beginning. And no matter what, it doesn't really matter that we put it in the middle. Unless we have something like B, B, B. Where, in this case, it doesn't really matter where we insert it around the Bs. But in this case, since A is less than B, 
we opt to put it in the beginning. In this case, where we have bkb, since k is greater than b, we opt to put the k after the b's, so we put it at the end. And only in this case, we opt to put it in the middle, but in this case, where you have bbb, it doesn't really matter, because if we put it at the end, the middle, or the beginning, it won't make a difference in what string. So therefore, this is how we can get our solution. And we just need to check the two strings, one where we put p in the beginning and in the end of our selected range. So this is our solution. So now let's go over the code implementation of the solution. So we're going to start out with our integer t and input into t. Then we're going to create two strings, s and p, and input into those. From here, in order to create our two strings s prime and p, we will need to use a frequency array. So what we do with this frequency array is we input all of the characters of s into this frequency array. Then we remove the characters of p from the frequency array, and this gives us the characters of s prime. So just to demonstrate how this works, let's create our frequency array first. We're going to create it of size 26. And the reason why we create the size 26 is because, remember, in our frequency array, we have the character of A mapping to the position 0, the character of B mapping to position 1, and so on. So in our frequency array, uh, what we're going to do is we're going to first input the, characters of in input the characters of S. So let's quickly go through the S of length. And what we're going to do is we're going to do frequency at position S at position I minus A plus plus. Then what we're going to do is we're going to remove the characters of P. And after removing these characters of P, we are left with S prime. Because what we have done essentially is taken S, removed P. So now we have S prime. So now we have the frequency array of S prime. And how does this help? We can use this frequency array of S prime and create two strings out of it. And what we can do is we can continuously build these strings up, and then we can compare these two strings at the end. Remember, one string is where we have P before the targeted section, and one string where we have P after the targeted section. So in order to do this, let's first create our two strings. So from here, we're going to create our long, long start, and we're going to set, set that equal to P at position 0 minus A. And what this basically is, is remember in a frequency array, we have A mapped to 0, B mapped to 1. P at position 0 is the first letter of P, right? And if we subtract A from it, we get the integer value. So basically, this will tell us what index the first letter of P is at. So using this, we can write our for loop going through our entire frequency array. And we can go through and print out the frequency array in Mexico graphical order. So basically, if we have I is unequal to start, right? Basically, in this, in this case, where we do not have to worry about inserting P, what we're going to do is we're just going to simply print out the characters. Okay, so what I've essentially done here is that I've just created some uh, uh, for loop with L. And basically for each of the times, like if we have three A's, we're going to run through this loop three times at the position A. We're going to do I plus A to create the character. So basically, um, I is going to range from 0 to 26. So when I is 0, then if we add A to it, we get that the print, char print, is an A. Right, so if i is 0, then we get print is equal to a. If i is 1, then print is equal to 1 plus a, which is b. Right, so this is basically um, just converting the numbers into characters by using this i plus a. And then what we're going to do is we're just going to add the characters to our, to our two strings, because we're not really worrying about p at this moment. Now when we do worry about p, which is the L statement, basically when i is equal to start, or basically, the index, the first letter of p, matches with what index letters we're printing out. Then what we want to do is we want to set, we're going to create two strings, right? One where we put p before we start printing out the rest of the letters, and one where we put it after. So let's just let, put it before for test 2. So let's just add p quickly before. And then after, we're going to add p to test 1. And in between, we're going to insert the characters the same way we did before, right? We're just going to put the string, we're just going to put P before we insert the character, we output the characters for one of the strings and after for the other. So this will basically give us our loop. So now at the end, once we've generated both of the strings, we're just going to compare them. And then, of course, we have to reset our frequency array. 